Bam. Oh, it's like, like a nice one. Acts like I've got some shoulders on him. Well, he just stoned a fit. He's mad. You're not that big. You're just mad. Boy, he threw a fit, didn't he? Well, he is a nice fish. You fought like he was a big fish. He is a nice one, guys. Goodness gracious. What a good first fish. Isn't that nice? This is Blue Boy Tadpole. But you know what? That's not what the video about today. He's a good, he's a good 11 half inch fish. The video is about today, how to fish a dock. Docks 101, because y'all already know that because y'all haven't seen the thumbnail. <laughs> All right, guys, let me give you some pointers on dock fishing because y'all know, y'all folks that watch my channel know that I fish docks all summer long. I've been fishing them now for about three weeks and I'll fish docks till about October. Sometime in October, crappy will leave docks and they'll go to the channel. This is the, I'm on the channel. Okay, that's the main creek channel right there. That's the main lake, okay? Summertime, you can catch them in the creeks, but you need to stay close to deeper water. Now you can see right here, I'm in 12 foot at the middle of the dock. It's 22 foot ahead and I'll show you that in a minute. But let's look what's under the dock right here. See there? Okay, these are the posts, those are the fish. Now, that's where a live scope can help you, or side imaging. A lot of folks I know use side imaging, that's what I used to use too. I could have pulled up here, backed my boat in or so forth, go by the front of the dock, close as I could. Use the trolling motor guide on side imaging. Slow it down. And set it like at 30, 40 feet, close as you can, because it makes everything bigger, and see what's going on. So I've got it right now 45 feet. Does the same thing here. If I shorten this, everything gets bigger. I took a fish, see? I can make it shallower. Okay, they'll get bigger. So the mark get bigger. All right? And make sure some fish there. Now, then you got to figure out what they want to hit. Okay? LC Shad is great to start with. If you're skipping docks, this Tadpole Junior, full-size Tadpole, and Tweety Bird are, are the best skipping baits I have. LC uh, Shad does skip good, though. But this is the best one, and Tweety Bird, on a 1 32nd ounce head, okay? Don't use any more weight than you have to use, okay? Now, the next thing about docks, the docks are in deeper water. On this lake, and I'm sure they do it everywhere, you know, anybody builds docks, usually the same techniques, they put braces on them. Sometimes they start at the front of the dock like this, and they run a brace out like that, okay? Seriously, out to the front. You gotta watch for those. But most of the time, they put X braces on them. They run a uh, two by six from this post, and they run it to the post that's supporting the, the framing. Then they run them across the boat slip too. Yep, right underneath the boat. So the boat's in the middle of it, it's about five or six foot, so the boat's not gonna hit it. They run them across both boat slips. And then sometimes on that inside, they'll run one on that inside, okay? This one has one on the inside. So when I skip back there, I need to get back there far enough, but I gotta stay away from the inside. The trick too is if you, if you cast it across the brace, let it sink three to five foot, Reel it and pull it up. Get it up over top of the brace and get it out of there. That's what I do too. Now the braces don't show up the best on live scope, but I'm going to show you here right there. See this line going that way? You see one right here going that way. That's braces. Okay, can you make that? There they are. See them right there? Yep. So that's something you got to be concerned with on docks. Most any dock that's newer on this lake, if it's a newer dock, it's, if it's within 10 to 15 years old, I'm going to say that new, it's cut braces on it. The old docks, they didn't do that, okay? If the dock's in shallow water, if it's only in six foot of water, usually it doesn't have a brace on it, all right? Now, here's the thing, though. The docks are in six foot are great during the spawn. After the crappie spawn and gets over and the water gets warmer, okay, the crappie gonna leave that shallow water. And this is what I'm showing you. They're gonna get close to the channel, okay? If you stay close to the creek channel and come on out of the creek some, you don't have to completely leave the creek, but get on out of the creek till maybe the last uh, quarter mile of it. Depends on how deep the creek is. Now, if you've got a deep lake and your creek is 60 foot, they might not ever leave it then, right? It's about water depth, guys. It's about cooler water. 
The back of this creek in the summertime will be 86, 88 degrees this summer. This channel this summer will still stay about 74, 76 because it has a current flow from the lake above us, okay? They make electricity here, so it helps cool it. So the crappie move out to get to the deeper water out here and the cooler water, all right? Is it cooler under a dock than it is out here, the water? No. I proved that in a video last year with my heat gun. I shot the water here and shot it on the dock at the same temperature. But what do we do? We go up and get in the shade, right, and get under a tree. Or we get under something to get out of the sun, right? That's what they're doing, guys. Because when you're standing in the sun, you can feel the heat. In the wintertime, we catch crappie out in open water. Sometimes only four or five foot deep. They're up there so they can feel the sun rays, okay? Summertime, they don't want to feel them just like we are. We want to get out of the sun, they do too. That's what it is. And they'll get to the darkest part of that dock. The bigger the dock is, the more coverage it has, the better. The bigger the boat, better. See that big old boat? That's a plus. A big pontoon boat, that's a plus. It covers more, more area, makes more shade, okay? Now, Another thing I'm going to show you, when you, when you get to a dock, stay a decent, decent distance from it, okay? Don't run right up on top of it. If you get hung on it, you got to go over there, you got to go over there. Be quiet, do the easiest way you can. Once you run that trolling motor a couple feet from that dock, it's usually not the same. I can tell you from watching them on live scope, I have learned so much with live scope. I hear a lot of people that I know make comments they don't like live scope. What a learning tool it is. It's very expensive. But it's been a great learning tool for you. Most anybody has one will tell you that. They've learned a lot about crappy behavior. All right? I can tell you when this trolling motor running, even this, even this, I'm sitting here on the spot like now, it's running, they tighten up. See how tight they are? They hear the noise in the area, they tighten up. They know, they know I'm here already. All right? So I'll catch a few of them, two or three of them, before they quit. All right? How do I fish a dock? Well, a lot of people shoot it. Okay? I'm not a shooter. But to shoot it, I could stand here and, and do it, and I'm not going to do it with this rod because I don't want to break my rod, guys. It's my favorite rod. Somebody asked me yesterday in a comment uh, about this rod. I get asked about it all the time. It's got two-pound test on it. Yes. Somebody said, you're flipping those crappy. That couldn't be two-pound test. Yes, this rod has two-pound test on it. I keep two-pound tests on this rod year-round. My other rods have four. Everything else has four-pound test. all right? But uh, you can grab it, grab your bait. you got to watch the hook and they bend the rod and they sling it. Well, you need to get down like this to do it the best. So, so here's what I like doing, okay? Instead of doing that, I grab my line right here light, lightly, uh, okay? And I'm gonna show you off my other camera here in a minute. I hold my rod down here like this, okay? That's how I'm gonna cast it. I'm gonna show you, right here in a sec. You wanna be about 15 feet from the dock, okay? Uh, I'm gonna hold my camera here so I can show y'all what I'm doing here and I got the other camera going too. You want to get the bait close to the water, just like that. Now, I hit a little soon there, but I lightly hit it because I'm holding my rod down, but it went way on back in there. All right, guys, I'm going to try to show you how I'm going to do this. And I usually, when I'm by myself, not filming, I stand right here, sometimes, right here. But I want you all to be able to see, okay? And I'm going to try to hold my cam that camera. i got both cameras going. Here's what I do. I hold my rod down close to the water like that. Okay? All right. Get your bait about six to eight inches from the end of your rod. Okay, you ready? I'm going to hold the rod down. I can hope y'all can see. There you go. Now, I'm trying to hit right under that dock ledge. All right, that time I hit back under it just a little bit. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. And that's fine because i got a nice opening on this dock. There are some docks, if y'all notice when I'm fishing them, there's some docks I only have like a six or eight inch opening. So when you have those, sometimes, and I'm gonna be honest with you here, I try to be honest with y'all as I can. I do it the first cast. No, I, I'm just kidding. When I, <laughs> I'm toying with y'all. When I have a small opening, sometimes it takes me three, four casts to get it under there. I'll, uh, I'll hit the dock two or three times, or I'll hit too early and it'll bounce up and hit the dock. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just keep casting it. If it takes me six licks to get it back under, through that little six inch opening, first crappy back there, hey, you know, don't, don't give up on it. I'm gonna try to hold this other camera. All right, there you go, bam. You see where my bait barely touched the water right there. And you notice it didn't make a big splash? It's cause I'm using a 132nd ounce head. 
the lighter head you use, the easier it is to skip, okay? Can you, can you skip a uh, 1 16th? Yes, you can. Oops, he come off, guys. That was a sunfish. I wouldn't even crap here. I got to see him when he'd come top water there. All right? See, go right on back in there. You can skip a heavier weight, but when you skip rocks, all of y'all have went to a lake and skipped rocks. You've picked rocks up and threw rocks across the lake, right? What do you look for when you skip a rock? You don't go over and pick up a gray big rock size of softball, do you? No, you pick up a rock about the size, a little bit bigger than a 50 cent piece, and you try to pick up a rock that's flat, right? Because you want to get more surface for the skip, okay? Bam, see there? This baits, is, uh, baits are the same way. If you get a bait that has a flat surface on it, and this tadpole is rounded like a football, a Tweety Bird is too, that gives you more bait to hit the water to bounce. If it's got a tail, that can slow it down. Like the willow tail does not skip good at all. It's the shape of it. All right? That makes sense? The shape of the bait is going to make a difference on how well it skips too. Okay? Now, but like I say, this from experience, I, oops, gosh guys, let that one go, didn't I? That was a nice fish right there. I got a little too rough on him. He got right there at the end, I pulled on him a little bit, and I should have I should have let him wear himself out more. Okay guys, I come to the front of the dock to show you the braces here. Now you can see the braces, see there? Now, a lot of times, let's let this boat get by. A, a lot of times, um, the crap, a lot of times the crappy will get on these dock braces on these docks, okay? They'll get on those axes and set on them. They'll get right in the right on them, like right here. See, it's a couple on them. I've done that many a times. See here, see the little spots right there. And what that is, there you go, like around it. <coughs> That, that brace you're looking at right here now, right there, is right there on this boat slip, all right? So if you throw back in that boat slip right there and you let it sink, it, you will get hung up. Now what I was telling you about this dock being a good dock, see it's 23 feet right here in front of this dock. I was right there casting under it. That's what I look for for a dock. Now some of you might say, hey, my lake, we don't, we don't have a 30 foot the deepest place. Well. Find the deepest docks you can find, all right? They're going to get on the deepest ones they can find with plenty of shade. That's what you need to look for. But, uh, and see, this dock has a big wide top on it, big double slip. That, that's the kind of stuff they like. More shade, deeper water, the better the dock's going to be. Do you know what a plus is on a dock? When somebody throws in a brush pile under it. A lot of homeowners will put cedar trees and Christmas trees in the boat slips, okay? Boy, that even makes them better. If they got a couple stumps in there. Now this one has natural rock. Yeah guys, he, he come out of that cove and took off right there out in front of me. He waked me a little bit, didn't he? A uh, lot, lot, lot of these banks like this have natural rock, so you know it's natural rock in the water too. They like that. All right, now there's a floating dock down here. Let's go down here and look at this floating dock. All right guys, we'll give you a little bonus clip here on how to fish a dock. And I'm going to throw this in between uh, the, uh, the dock and the floating dock. I came back in this creek. Now, I still have some water depth here, okay? I'm still sitting. Look, I'm sitting in 13 foot. Again, it's the bank. We've got a good drop. I'm on the channel. I said earlier in the beginning of the video, the crappie will start moving to the channel as the water gets hot. So it's 75 back here. They're going to stay back here for a little bit. Look here. Yep, that's a good school of crappie. And they're back under that float. And that's what I wanted to share with you. They're back. Let's see if I can get back in there. They're back in there. All right. The first one started about five, four foot back on that edge. And they go on back in there. The majority of them are back about that tube, back, tube uh, toy there. So you ride on it. The kids ride on. Okay. And uh, while they're back that far, <clears throat> bam, they're back that far, guys, to get in the shade. Okay, now the sun is on that side. The sun is on that side coming this way, see? That's why they're on this side. Now you know what they'll do as the day goes on? Those fish will move with the sun. As the day goes on and that sun comes across, okay, and gets on this side, they'll move to that side, okay? They're going to stay in the darkest part of that shade. 
Now, if you want one of them to bite you, you're going to have to hit him in the head. Okay, they're not, in, they're not under, I don't know if I said this in the fir first part or not. If I did, forgive me, okay? This is later on the day, and I just had me thinking about it. Uh, it's actually late now. It's, uh, it's not, almost 10 o'clock. But I got, got here fishing, and I got thinking about that shade, and the sun's almost straight up, and about how that shade's going to move on that dock. That's why I wanted to add this. They're, they're going to move with that shade. Why are they under that dock? They're under that dock, guys, for the shade. I know I said that earlier. And they're not really feeding. So for you to catch them, you're going to have to hit them in the head. You're going to have to put it back up to them. Uh, I was talking to a guy the other day. He said, oh, best way to fish the dock is get up on it. And I just thought about this a little bit. I thought, I need to share this with y'all. He said, get up on it and just put your bait around the edge of the dock and just dangle it and they'll come out and grab it. Well, you know what? You probably can catch some doing that. I, I'm sure you can. I'm sure, I mean, a lot of y'all probably own docks. So yeah, I do that all the time. But those crappy that are back there under that tube right there, and you got a bait up here dangling around it, you might get one or two to sucker out there. The rest of them are going like, nah, nah. I'm back here in this shade. I'm going to stay there. That's why I'm skipping back under there. And I can tell you from watching the live scope, if I'm five feet short of that school, they won't come after. They don't go like, hey, I'm going to come and get it. I got to be in their face. When I get the bait right at them and it drops down right beside of them or right in them and I move it, one of them hit it. It reminds me of when you're uh, at home, mom says, you know, she doesn't have the pot roast meal and you, you're sitting there going, oh my gosh, I'm so full. And she says, hey, I got cake and ice cream. No, mom, I don't want no cake and ice cream. She's cutting cake and putting a nice scoop of ice cream on for everybody and putting it around and you go, no. And she sets one in front of me and you go, you go, all right. And you go ahead and eat it, right? And then you get up and go like, oh my gosh, yeah. That's what a crappy does. He's really not hungry. But if you put it right in his face, he's gonna take he's gonna take uh, uh, advantage of that opportunity of something in front of him to eat and he's gonna grab it. Okay, it's just react we call it reaction strike, reaction bite. That's what it is. Thought I would throw that in there. Hey, let's go fish that floating dock now. Okay, folks. You can see this is a floating dock. Now they put a floating dock here, as you can see, this old rocky bank. They probably wouldn't be able to drive a post to start with, but it's in deep water, okay? Now, I'm close to the bank here, guys. I'm about 16, 18 foot from the bank. You can see I'm in 17 foot. Let's look around here. Okay, there's some fish. Let's extend this thing. See the fish right here? You see, there's no dock post. All those spots of fish. Now, it says they're 35, start at 30 feet. So, if they're at 30 feet, they're on the other side of that dock. Now, you can see these platforms at the bottom. There's not a break in them. I could not get to them if I wanted to. They're over underneath that pontoon boat. So, let's see how we can get to these fish. Now, I have, I have caught fish off this dock before, guys, many a time through the years. But I'm just trying to share with you how I would look at a dock. I noticed Sam on Wildlife Adventures was fishing a floating dock the other day, and it didn't have a boat in it, I don't think, but it probably had this float. See how that's on a, they're on floats. It'd be tough to get back in there. It, it touches the sides. The frame of that, whatever that rig is, it comes out and touches the sides, so you don't want to try that, all right? Now, the fish are 20 feet from us. That means they're under this platform right here, okay? Again, you have to use side imaging, guys, if you don't have a live scope to do that. And I used to, before I ever had a, before I ever had a live scope, okay, I used to catch fish off this dock. I'm fishing some of the same docks that I always used to fish. I do have a few new docks that I fish, probably about 10, that I didn't used to fish, because you know why? Now I go hunting for crappy. Now I run down the lake and start looking at docks and going like, eh, is any under there? So, yeah, I have found more spot. I have found more brush piles with this live scope. Okay, because it gives you a better reading than a side scan, but there's some guys, y'all are good with side scan. Y'all know what this big orange ring is? That's Stargate. Yep. Some of you are going, yep. Yep, Jack would know. Jack could uh, get Jack and uh, Major Carter to uh, dial us in. We probably could go to another lake right there. That's probably what he uses that for. He goes from lake to lake with that Stargate. Some of you are going, Dennis, you're crazy. All right, just look up Stargate, guys. Get on. Get on, get on Netflix, Pluto, one of those. Look up Stargate. If you have never watched it, it's interesting. My wife and I, we've been watching it now for about a year. 
but twice a week we'll watch a couple episodes of it. It's really interesting. All right, now, if y'all like to watch uh, stuff like that, space it's space stuff. They travel from planet from uh, to uh, other other universes, guys, to a stargate. And that's what it looks like. It's a, it's a big ring. <laughs> All right, right here. Now, there's two openings here. And I can look back and see the black uh, floaters on the other side. So I'm going to be limited how far I can go. I'm not at a good distance. I need to get a little closer. 12 to 15 feet, guys. It's, it's the best distance to skip. You, get, you can be too close. Now, if you're shooting, it's a different story. Some of y'all shoot. And I've got an old rod at home. It's a six, six footer. Five and a half, six footer. To me, they're better for shooting. All right. Now, on back in there. Again, this light head skips easy. 130 seconds easy. It says the, all around the best skipping side weight you want. And this tadpole, it just goes on. As you see, I hit the water a little too soon and it goes on back there. You don't have to be perfect caster, guys. All right, guys. I cut y'all off because I didn't know how long it will take me the next cast I caught one. Uh, I lapsoed that one. You ever lap so one? He flopped at the boat and got the line around him. That's what he done. You done that to yourself, buddy. He flopped at the boat. All right. All right, got it. Say ah. Uh. All right. Now, guys, I'll be honest with you. I have fished this dock many a times. So I've never caught any big crap here. That was a decent fish. He was eating size. He was 10 inches. But I've never caught any 12 or 13s here. Most of them I catch here are 8 to 10 inches. The hardest part is getting to them. You've got to keep casting back under there. And you can hear it hit the other side. It's the floaters going down the other side, underneath that stargate. There's a set of floaters. That's where the walkway is. When you hear it hit that and let it fall, they got to suck her out and hit it. So there you go. All right, guys, came up with another one. This one came out of this other slip. So I can I act like jump like a bass. That's crappy. <laughs> I catch so many bass. That's a nice one. So that's why I just told you. I don't catch many big ones here. This, this is probably about as big as they get right here. He's about 10 and a half, 10, 10 and three quarter. That's a nice fish. They'll be under this dock right here. I, I've never came to this dock that it didn't have crappy on it. Now, some of y'all local boys watching are going like, yeah, we fish it too. I see people, other people here fishing it. This is not a secret place, guys. <laughs> this is a place that a lot of people fish, okay? And uh, I, I see people here right often. Uh, I'm not showing y'all anything special. I'm just showing you that floating docks will hold crappy, okay? Now, I do know of about three floating docks on this lake that I know of. And all three of them have crappy on them. So there you go. If you are a local person, I just told you something. Because I've been to all three of them, and all three of them have had crap, crap on them. There's one right here on the main lake, up about uh, half a mile. There's one, it's got crap on it too. Every time I've stopped there, it's had crap on it. They like it because of the shade. They got that big platform. And again, it's in deep water. If he would add some brush here, you know, I've talked to this guy a couple times. I just need to ask him, can I do it? If I could go up on this little bank and cut a small tree, bumblebees guys if he would let me put one of those small trees down here beside of it okay and about that 15 to 20 foot mark the crappy would pull out and use that brush too because they like this deep bank all right guys there you go two different style docks one floating one permanent one with braces this dock right here always has crappy on it too it's full of braces they even run it this way underneath of it I don't fish it very often because when every time I fish it, I lose three or four jigs. <laughs> so I don't fish it very often. But it always has crappy on it. Skipping is the easiest thing for me. You could be a shooter. Figure out how you like to do it. Some people can shoot. Mason fishes with me some. He can shoot. He's good at it. Uh, Sam can shoot. Sam fished with me. He can shoot them back in there. So is this something I never, I never done a whole lot with? My style boat, it's harder to shoot. If you're going to shoot, you're better off shooting if you got a boat like this. Where you can get down like this. this is what Sam done. He sat down here like this and shot. It's easier to shoot if you get your bait down close to the water, right? Just like skipping a rock. Again, you get your bait close to the water, it'll go back in there further, all right? Appreciate y'all guys. Hope that helped you. This video wasn't about catching fish, but I wanted to catch a couple and show you that, hey, docks have fish on them. And, uh, hey, they're catchable, all right? 
So that's what I'm going to go do now. I'm going to go fish a couple docks and make some videos for y'all on a couple uh, couple baits. Uh, I've been trying to use uh, a lot of the tadpoles in different colors. I've got a few new colors I'm playing with in the tadpole and stuff. I might pull one of those out on you. If you haven't seen this video, this video, I'm going to try to load this video probably next Wednesday. And uh, I've got, wow, a nice fish broke right there. I got to see him. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, the uh, Chaos Swim Baits are on the site, ready to go, guys. Came on yesterday, which was Friday. I already sent some out today. Somebody, <laughs> somebody bought some after it was only on there about 15 minutes. My son worked on it last night. I, I called and talked to him about, uh, well, he called me about 7 o'clock. He said, Dad, I ain't got them on yet. I'm going to do it here in a minute. I've been busy. I said, okay. He texted me about 9 o'clock. He said, they're done. By 9.30, 9.20, I had an order for them. So there you go, guys. Some of y'all were waiting for them, and I appreciate that. Uh, I caught fish with them yesterday. I fished yesterday, too. And I done good with the, uh, the ACOS swim bait at one dock. So the fish need to be a little bit more active for a swim bait. But you don't have to move it fast. You can jiggle it. Y'all check them out. They work great. Hey, Dennis, Fishing Lake Country. We'll catch y'all guys around.